Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 16.5 beta 2 has been out for over a week. We'll take a look at the overall experience since I've been using it full time on my 14 pro max and iPad. And also we'll take a look at the bugs, battery life, and some Apple news, and also what to expect next with iOS 17 and also iOS 16.6, since that's already in testing. Now we had some new features this past week. The first one has to do with HomePod. So if we go into the home app, I had a separate video about this and this is my camera, but it's actually just turned down so you can't see it. We have a new safety and security feature with sound recognition on the HomePod. And this allows the HomePod to recognize if there's a smoke detector going off or a carbon monoxide detector. I showed it in more depth in a different video, but it allows you to enable that on these devices. And then it will send you an alert when it actually hears that and then allows you to check back in with the home pod. So I'll link that video if you want to check it out, but it's a really nice feature that's now active and you can just set it up quickly like this, turn it on and you're good to go. So the next thing that they released this week is the Apple savings account. Apple savings account is now available in the United States in Apple wallet. If you have an Apple card, if you go into your Apple wallet, and within the Apple wallet, tap the three dots in the upper right, go to daily cash and under daily cash, you have savings. And then you'll see there's only a balance of about $3 in there right now, but you have the savings account if you sign up for this. So that's something new. If you want to use it, you can use it in the United States. You do have to sign up for it and put in some information, but it will allow you to use it if you want to, and then earn about 4% interest or so. Now I wanted to make you aware of an issue that people keep having over and over. Often people are seeing that they're having to be prompted for their iCloud password over and over. This seems to be an ongoing issue for many where it would just prompt you over and over and over. And so this is something thankfully I'm not seeing, but a lot of people are seeing. I've found some of this has to do with the advanced security protection being enabled, but Apple has yet to address it since it seems to be an ongoing issue. Also, many have been talking about the iPhone when they're maybe taken from you when you're using them in a public place, and then someone can log in with your ID if they saw you put it in, or if it's already unlocked, they could quickly go in and change your Apple password. Apple actually responded to this and that they'll actually look into this more. I showed you in a separate video, how you can enable a screen time password that will completely disable them from being able to go into the account settings and it will require a separate password. So make sure you do that. If you're concerned about that and using your phone in a public place a lot, uh, I've had a lot of people ask me, why would this be necessary? And it's typically you're using your phone, someone walks by, swipes it out of your hand and is already logged into your phone without it being locked. Then they can completely change your password. So Apple definitely needs to address it and at least they're looking into it. With iOS 16.5, the overall features have been pretty small at this point. We only have four of them and this is pretty small compared to what we had with iOS 16.4. However, we're only at beta two and sometimes we don't see many of those features until we get to beta three. However, Apple is of course working on iOS 17, so they're probably saving a bunch of features for that. However, we have four features. One is that we can turn on and off screen recording using Siri. The news app has a new UI with a sports button at the bottom in the middle. That's something that's new. You can follow teams there. It just makes it easier to get to. There's no more beta profile and they've added the beta profile to the Apple watch. So if you go into the watch app, go to general or not the beta profile, but the new way to actually sign up, they've added that. Give it a second here. There it goes. It shows up. And then you can of course enable the beta profile or the public beta, depending on what you're signed up for. Additionally, you can install the updates when you're below 50% battery. That's all we know so far. So hopefully with 16.5 beta three, we see some more. Now we do know that iOS 16.6 is in testing. However, we probably won't see any of those betas until 16.5 is released to the public. So it will be at least a few weeks. We'll talk about when to expect that in a few moments. Now, as far as other updates, Apple will soon let us unsubscribe from a subscription within the related app, instead of having to go to your settings and then going into your account. And then once you're in subscriptions, you can see different subscriptions you might have with different devices or apps. And you currently have to go here to unsubscribe from those soon. We'll be able to do it directly from the app. Apple will 
put an interface there, making it easier to unsubscribe. So that's something that will be very helpful. If maybe you're just within that app, you don't have, want to have to go back out into settings and do it there. Now, as far as the Apple watch, there is a new feature there as well. And if you're in different countries, they've added it for you. The feature specifically has to do with running. So if you run and it recognizes that you're on a track, it will record that track and let you run there and keep track of information from there. This feature is now rolling out to France and the Netherlands. So that's something we haven't had before in different countries. They're rolling it out throughout different countries now. So maybe they'll do that just like they did with maps. Apple's also updating their website in a couple of ways. One of them is talking about the environment with Earth Day, since that's this week as well. And there's also a report talking about how they're recycling and more. They've also updated their trade in website, which is really nice because it didn't really talk about what your actual value would be very well. Now it will, you can see phone, Apple watch, Mac, see what the trade in value is and go into your specific device and figure out what it would be. That's super helpful and gives you that information instead of going to the store and hoping it's what you wanted it to be. So this gives you better information about that. Now, Apple also opened up a couple stores this past week. I posted about this on Twitter and in previous videos. So India finally has two stores, the Apple Sackett store and BKC. So we have Mumbai and also New Delhi and Tim Cook was there. And many of you sent in different photos of that. So I really appreciate it. And hopefully they're really nice stores. They look great and hopefully there'll be more and more in India very, very soon, making it easier for people around the world to get different Apple products or even just get them service that can be tough in different locations. Now, Apple has the iPhone 15 that they're working on. I've talked about this a little bit, and I wanted to mention a couple other things that have recently come out about it. We've talked a lot about the different buttons where it could be a singular button, similar to the first gen iPhone or the 3G and 3GS. Then they switched to the two button design with iPhone four and we have the silent switch. All of the sources seem to agree that the silent switch will be replaced with an action button similar to the Apple watch ultra. I think that's a great idea. You could change it to whatever you want. I typically just put it on silent and leave it. As far as the volume buttons, I don't really care if they're single button or double button, but there's mixed different rumors about whether or not it could be haptic or actual physical buttons. Either way, it doesn't matter as long as they work, but those seem to be mixed. So maybe we'll have some surprises as well as more and more rumors come out and they seem to be mixed more and more. Apple's rumored upcoming AR or VR headset is finally getting some positive news. A leaker on Twitter, Evan Blass, has been reliable in the past and says he knows someone who's used the headset and was recently blown away by a recent demo. There's been mixed results coming out as far as overall information that it's kind of disappointing at times or underwhelming. Now they're saying it's quite good. I wouldn't imagine Apple would release a product that was pretty boring, but hopefully they have some really great apps as they're working on some huge apps with that. So that means the iOS 17 update won't be as large because they're working on reality OS. So that makes a lot of sense. Of course, they'll incorporate all of the augmented reality into iOS 17. And we've heard even more about iOS 17 this past week. While we do expect it to have an updated control center, some changes to focus the health app, maybe some widgets that are interactive accessibility updates, dynamic Island updates, hopefully camera updates, and maybe a few other things, specifically stability. The new information says that side loading will be a part of iOS 17 that will allow for third party app stores due to having to comply with new regulations in the EU. That's similar to why Apple is expected to have USB C on the iPhone 15 to comply with those same sort of regulations. They have to have a more open system with iOS similar to what we have with Mac. We can install third party apps outside of the app store, but you don't have to do it if you don't want to. So we'll have to see if they'll allow it outside the European union and allow allow that everywhere, or if it will be something different and unexpected. Either way, I don't think it's a problem because you don't have to use it if you don't want to, but if you want to, the option should be available. Now, as far as the overall experience with iOS 16.5 beta two, I did take a look at the YouTube community poll again that we had seven days ago talking about 
how it was for you. I went back and looked at a bunch of recent comments and so far it seems to be mostly stable. That's not true for everything, but it seems to have minimal issues compared to what we had before. Bluetooth seems to be working well for me and that may have to do with some of the AirPods updates we had recently. So that AirPod update seemed to improve not only connectivity, there we go. It's a little bit slow sometimes when there's a ton of different devices, but it seems to improve connectivity, not only with AirPods, but also with different apps that connect to vehicles and more. So it seems to be quite good there. And originally I did have an issue with cell service, but I haven't had that issue since last week after a reboot. It really wouldn't connect. It couldn't find cellular signal and a reboot completely fixed it. So that's better now. It wasn't for a little while. However, the alarm is still buggy for some, so you want to be careful there. Make sure you have a separate device if you're having some issues with that. Also, notifications are still a little bit glitchy as far as sliding up and down or disappearing and just not responding. See, it's acting a little weird there. It's overlaying itself. So there's a few different graphical glitches there. And additionally, people are having issues with Wi-Fi. I'm hearing this more and more where it just sort of drops and then will reconnect. I've seen that myself on my router and I've actually reset my router. I have different types of routers at different locations and I'm seeing it at both. So it seems to be an issue with iOS. Also, I have one weird issue with health. I actually added medication here. So if we go into medication, I just added Tylenol to try this out. If I go into one, it crashes the app. So I added that to see if they made any changes when I was looking for something new. Again, if we go back here, we'll go into medication, tap on them. It instantly crashes. I can't remove those and I get an alert for those every single day. As far as the camera, I don't think there's any improvements at this point, not beyond what I talked about last week. It seems to be very similar. So if I turn off the light here, take a photo, let's take a screenshot. You can see for yourself if it looks any different. I think it looks pretty good. I don't know if they've improved processing, but they haven't talked about it, but it hasn't improved over a week or so. It would need to be a software update to do that. So if you're wondering if you should install iOS 16.5 beta 2, at least wait for beta 3 at this point. That's something that I would hold out for just because it's pretty buggy with a few different things that may be critical with alarms and Wi-Fi. But for the most part, it's stable. I haven't had any crashes or anything like that. As far as iOS 16.5 beta 3's release, I would expect that as soon as probably next Tuesday. I thought it could be this week, but sometimes they change it up a little bit. So I would expect iOS 16.5 beta 2 next Tuesday or Wednesday. And typically when we have early betas, we'll either have a one week or every two week release. We don't really know as Apple changes it up. With iOS 16.4 from beta 2 to beta 3 was a week from three to four is a week, but early betas are two weeks. Right now it seems like it's two weeks. So next Tuesday or Wednesday, and then maybe a release candidate and a final release probably sometime in mid-May. That's what I would expect. I would not expect too many different features or changes as Apple's getting ready for WWDC and iOS 17. That's where the big features and changes will be. So of course we'll have 16.6, 16.7, all the way up until September when they release iOS 17 to the public, typically around when the new iPhone launches. That's what they do every year. Now, as far as overall battery life, Let's talk about that a little bit. This phone has 162 cycles, as you can see here from Coconut Battery. That's an external app that I installed. It's not in the App Store on the Mac. So if you want to try it out, it is free, but it is something I use. I'm down to 97%. Now, if you watch my iPhone 14 Pro six months later video, you actually saw that the battery health was 100%, but had more cycles than I have. So that was a little odd since my wife's phone actually has more cycles, but lower when I have lower battery capacity with less cycles, but that's just something that seems to be happening here. And I'm not sure why, as far as the overall battery life itself, well, it's not great. I'm on a beta, so I don't really expect that, but you'll see, I only got three hours and 29 minutes of screen active time, seven hours and 24 minutes of screen idle time and used almost 100%. Now I did use the hotspot a bit and some other things, but background activity really shouldn't be affecting that. Today though is doing quite well. Three hours and 58 minutes of screen active time, one hour and 27 minutes of screen idle time. And I've only used about, well, we're at 58%. So around 50% of my battery, less than that, about 40. So really quite good. Not too bad at this point, but days vary from day to day. Sometimes it's great. Sometimes it's terrible. So it just depends on the overall day.
Now, as far as the overall performance, nothing to complain about here. It's been quite good, whether that's the iPhone 11 or the iPhone 8 even. Most people say it's quite good with the exception of the keyboard being a little bit stuttery when you're typing. So you'll see scrolling is fine. The same is true for ProMotion on the, the Pro phones. So no issues there. But as far as some of the typing, that can be a little slow. So if we look for App Store, you'll see it's a little bit stuttery. That's the one complaint. Overall, it seems okay, but it is a beta. We just need to report that in feedback and hope they take care of it. Now, as far as the overall heat of the phone, many are concerned about that as it's getting a little warmer out. I really wouldn't worry about it too much as it's nice and cool to the touch, but in general, it's going to manage itself. So I really wouldn't worry about that too much, but just wanted to mention it. It's not really an issue, but let's take a look at the thermal camera anyway. And right now it's even cooler than it was last week in the hottest area. It's about 86 degrees Fahrenheit and in the same area in Celsius, it's about 31 degrees. So it seems to be doing well overall. I really have no complaints as far as that goes. Again, it should manage itself. And if it's actually overheating, you'll get an overheat message on your phone. So that's when it actually is overheating. As far as storage, I did want to mention that one more time, the storage bug really isn't a bug. It's your phone using cache and using it to help performance overall. So we'll let this load and you'll see here, if we scroll to the bottom, we have iOS taking up 9.82 gigabytes and system data is taking up zero. Now this can vary all the way up to a hundred gigabytes, depending on how much storage you have free. So I just wanted to mention it one more time. As many people ask me and say, I have a storage bug. As long as you can install apps, it can use a hundred gigabytes just to give you better performance, maybe move data around and then it goes up and down. That's why it's all the way at the bottom. Now, as far as the overall comments and what you had to say, let's take a look at a few new ones. Seth Thomas says iPhone 14 pro max using 16.5 beta two solid battery life and Siri performance seems faster. Phone seems quite responsive overall. Brian Scher says 16.5 beta two pro 14 max 256 gigabytes phone is warmer. Some issues switching between Wi-Fi and cell with Verizon having to force quit some apps and then restart them. Raul Fernandez says I have iOS 16.5 beta two on my iPhone 14 pro it's good overall. However, I'm having one annoying issue where the phone keeps prompting for iCloud and iMessage activation repeatedly. Lasha says I have iOS 16.5 beta two on my iPhone 14 pro max and it's absolute beast. Just today I hit 11 hours, 35 minutes screen on time with 46 minutes screen idle time and still on 20% battery life with no lags or any issues. So that's everything with iOS 16.5 beta two. Let me know how your experience is going in the comments comments below. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, it will be linked in the description as it always is. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.